Let's head over to the wide receivers here. Now, you said when we were uh, talking at one point, I don't know if it was in the running back conversation or not, that this has a chance to be a really good receiver group, but maybe a small chance. And I'm, I, I would kind of had this let off with the receivers doesn't get my blood pumping quite like it did in, in past years. And opening the RSP and looking at it, I think there's a, a decent discussion here of, for the fantasy people, wide receivers one through five are, are semi consensus, and, and uh, but I'm so I'm going to list those out. We got JSN at, at at one, Addison at two, Zay at number three, Quentin Johnson at four, and Downs at five. That's typically when you're doing a, a rookie draft. That's in some order they go. Yeah, um, we've been big fans of Zay on this show. If you're if I don't understand how you come away from seriously diving into Zay Flowers and not be just like damn this guy is so much fun and so impressive and and has all the other things the outside of of football uh work ethic and and just family kind of stuff and and just a, seems to be a really good dude and is just absolutely ridiculous on the field so, so we got him You're up there on the, top the edge three. of your seat every time yeah, he gets and, the ball just can kind of do it all so there's some some zay discourse but we don't need to get into that i don't think i, I think there's some other guys that are interesting to me I think regardless of how you want to chop those guys up, that's kind of how it goes. But we can pick up at, you know, Quentin Johnson seems to be getting late, late, uh, you know, kind of before the draft. It seems like a couple of guys always get late discourse. Quentin Johnson seems to be getting a little bit of that right now, whereas maybe he was at the top of this chart. And then Downs, um, for you, doesn't seem to be quite, spoiler alert, doesn't seem to be quite as up there in the fantasy realm as others. So maybe just a quick pick up on those two guys on, on what your thoughts are. Sure, because I think everybody you mentioned there, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I feel good about. Um, Quentin Johnson, I still think, can be a, a contributing player or a rotational starter in this league early for year one. If you put him on routes like slants, screens, over routes, crossing routes, where he's running across the field, using his athletic ability, he's a good route runner. Any type of route breaking back to the quarterback, he'll be fine with, especially against zone coverage. The problem was with Quentin Johnston is that he's being rated like he's a number one receiver or one of the top three receivers in the class and a future primary receiver. And that may happen, but for sure. that to happen, he's going to have to learn how to position his body at the catch point against coverage. He's going to learn how to position his hands at the catch point uh, based on the trajectory of the ball against mm -hmm. that coverage. And he's going to have to learn how to get his hands together so that he's not clapping the ball with the serial problems that he does right now. <laughs> serial um, clapper. He's a serial pass clapper. And everyone claps passes. Everyone does because it's hard to be running at full speed, dealing with a defender and, you know, doing all different things and then have to get your hands together first and then extend up out wherever you're going. Oftentimes what can happen is you end up clapping a little bit. But he does it so egregiously that it ruins his catch point, kind of in the same way. Now, there's some serial clappers in the league who get good production. Gabriel Davis is one of them, but he's got a 50% catch rate. And is he a number one receiver? No, I think everybody no, found out yeah. that he's not. Um, Might not even be a number two. That's exactly right. So there you go. You got that. And then um, and then you have the only guy who's that way, and I joke that he's like the bumblebee. His hands are like the bumblebee. It's like scientifically impossible <laughs> to fly, but they do, is Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, he does things that you should say, there's no way that should work. There's no way he could be that good and do it, and he does it. So other than Terry McLaurin, I've never seen a serial clap tacker um, do this. And, you know, other than maybe, well, Golden Tate. Golden Tate occasionally could do that too. Those are the two in 18 years that I, yeah. that I would put in that way. So when you look at Quentin Johnston, I haven't ranked ninth. I have, but the more important score is that, again, borderline starter immediately. If you use him right, he'll be fine. But all those other plays that you do to be a primary receiver against primary corners on situations where the quarterback is like, look, they know it's coming, but I'm coming to you. He's not going to win those as often right now. If he learns, he can. If he never learns and it, he's working on it, you can see that he's working on it, but he doesn't look comfortable when he's doing the right things. Uh -huh. And so he's making the catch, so there's promise. But if he didn't fix all these things and he wasn't working on it, he wouldn't have been even in my top 15. But he's, he's if still If he was Drew Locke, he wouldn't be in your top 15. That's right. 
He's work, and it's showing he's working at it. So it's sure. good. So I'm optimistic about him, but I but until he can do those things, he's not a he's not a primary receiver in the league right now. And projecting that he'll get there when he doesn't look comfortable with it is I can't say lock solid he's going to get there. I can say he might be inconsistent, but still good enough with the right routes that you that he'll be a solid wide receiver too. Yeah. And, and, and what are you, what are your, I feel like downs on the analytical community right now, as far as the fantasy people, they're, they're really liking some Josh downs right now. And I, I don't dislike Josh downs. I'm just not as over the moon as maybe some of them are. And like, they'll, they'll put them over Zay and I'm like, y'all are high, which, you know, yeah, but I'm you know, kind of, I, what, what's your thoughts on downs a little bit? I'm there with you. I think he's, yeah. You know, uh, if there, I've been saying, if he's a player, if there's a player I miss on, it's because something that the reason everybody's so high on him is something that I'm I'm missing. But I think he's a classic slot receiver. I don't think he's an outside receiver. Zay Flowers can play all three positions. He may mm-hmm. start in the slot, but he'll eventually get expanded to being flanker or split end. He's good enough to be able to do that. I didn't see that from Josh Downs. I yep. saw a good slot receiver, which means at best he's like a Hunter Renfro type of player. And I loved Hunter Renfro. Oh, sure. Hunter Renfro's awesome. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, but it's the but it's the type of thing that in this league where now they're not trying to go. I, I think that we're gonna see the trend away from the slot receiver a little bit. Because now you because defenses are stretched out, because they got the you know, they got the Dion Buchanan's and sorry, Isaiah Simmons, you know, it's the players who who are great athletes and great football players in college, but don't really have a position in the league right now and can't handle the run to the level that you're expecting, maybe, or the coaches are expecting. And I may be wrong about Simmons. I haven't watched him lately. So but I know with, you know, some of these guys, they don't hold up as well when they have the the safeties disguised as linebackers. And when you run counter gap toss, all these power type of plays, and you're going to use more second tight ends in your equation right. or big slots, you know, guy like downs to me seems like the North Carolina version of Duke's Jamison Crowder, you know, mm-hmm. maybe a little Which, better than boy, Jamison Crowder. Boy, but if, if he's Jamison, I, we, 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 we've been big Crowder guys. You just uh, stay healthy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing. But people were, you know, and Crowder is pretty good. Yeah. You know, for sure. But like, was he, is he winning strictly from the outside? I, you no, know, sometimes, no. but no. So that's the thing. Like, I think he's, he's got a rotational starter grade for me. That's a good grade. He can be helpful. I just don't see him putting him in with Zay Jones, with Zay Flowers is kind of like taking Jamison Crowder and saying, Putting him with Jalen Waddle. Are they the same player? No. <laughs> right. No thanks. Right. Um, all right. Well, let's go to uh, two more guys that I want to talk about. That one has been gaining a lot of speed recently, at least in the fantasy community. And the other one I just happened to do uh, two nights ago uh, in Xavier Hutchinson and uh, Jonathan Mingo. Um, so I did Hutchinson the last two nights. And then Mingo, I haven't really gotten too in the weeds with just yet, but he seems to be gaining a lot of traction right now, uh, kind of going the opposite direction of Quentin Johnston. Giving, you know, this is a, a class I've joked around. We've joked around. We may, you know, this is a class of a little bit more of the small Kings kind yeah. of wide receivers. And Mingo gives you that bigger guy. Like both of those guys, I think would be nice fits in San Francisco guys who can block guys who are pretty versatile, can do a lot of things, you know, maybe not extreme deep threats, but well, we could start with Hutchinson where, I know you have him ranked pretty high, which, you know, I, I was like, all right, that's I'm on to something here. That That's good. You know, a couple of your running backs we were driving with a couple of the receivers I'm driving with. I don't know that I would necessarily put him this high, but again, after that top five, at least in the fantasy community, it seems to be all over the place. I don't want anything to do with Jalen Hyatt um, necessarily in my fantasy draft unless he falls far enough. But Hutchinson, while maybe not being the most vertical threat, I thought the short and intermediate game was, was fantastic from, from Hutchinson. Like I think, you know, the quickness and, and ins and outs and, and and mobility from him for the bigger size that he has were great and a good, pretty good blocker. Um, you know, the screen game was good. So I, I really enjoyed Hutchinson and, and you you must feel similar. So give me some some thoughts on Hutchinson and then follow up with your thoughts on Mingo, who isn't does isn't necessarily a big on your list or anything, but I just know he's been getting some hype. 
Yeah, well, I like them both. And and Minko's a guy I've been saying in the RSP that where are all those landmines of players who clap attack footballs who could be better than the first tier, but they have all these landmines under them because they don't catch the ball with good technique. Mingo's my bet is the guy that when all the landmines blow up, he's going to be standing there intact. Um, basically, maybe maybe some clothing a little blown off, you know, or, or ripped <laughs> apart, but you know, a little tattered. But he's going to be okay. He's the guy that I'd bet on in that second tier. Um, and you can find a scouting report I'm on for free at Football Guys right now. I I put that out there on him because he's a guy that I I feel good about. Richard uh, Hutchinson is to me an immediate starter. I know that that's the grade I have for him. You may not get that, but he's capable of that. And that's because, like you said, um, he's a good route runner in the intermediate and um, short games. He's someone that the important part of um, being a receiver is that after the catch, you need to transition downhill north-south immediately. And he has a real knack for that and great footwork yeah. to do it in tight spaces, which is very difficult to do. He's someone and the frame to do it as frame's well. Frame's good. Great catch radius. He's got mm-hmm. a – he is a terrific, very wide catch radius. He's got good quickness. He knows how to run routes with um, enough pacing and enough skill with footwork that he will – I mean, four five three is not shabby. It's not – again, it's enough to be a starter. He's not a primary deep threat. But play action, think Keenan McCardell – Think a plus version of Marquez Callaway, who's a little more, who can do a lot more than Callaway. Think mm-hmm. of him as a poor man's version of Justin Jefferson. You know, Ooh. I think he's not as fast. Yeah. But he's but you got do an all around game of, of really good quickness from him that, yes. that are like, damn, that was, that was pretty quick right there. Yeah. Six, um, nine, one, three cone is elite. Yeah. Four, three, five, 20. It's not bad. You know, that's I think that's starter caliber on my on my tier. So, yeah, the the most important thing about getting separation against one on one coverage when it's tight, besides, you know, great technique is short area quickness and and initial acceleration. That's what the 20 and the three cone show. And the and the 36 vertical leap also shows explosion. So that's there. Cooper Cup did it. Cooper Cup had better numbers. But you see Cooper Cup getting open on guys deep yep. occasionally because, mm-hmm. again, when they match him tight, he can blow by them, and he's got great technique. Hutchinson isn't quite there, but he's good. Um, big fan. Mingo? Mingo certainly isn't, you know, Mingo to me is 11th on my board. Still, that's a that's a good place for him because he is at a rotate solidly in the rotational starter tier, meaning that right now if you put him in the game and said – Let's feed you screens. Let's do play action routes where you're going to get lost behind the defense. Let's run over routes. Let's have you do some, you know, routes where you're not facing up against a primary guy or working against zone. You can be a productive starter right now if we need you to do that. You know, might need a little work to get up there with the complexity of defenses. So think Muhammad Sanu as his baseline of where maybe he's going to develop into. If things get better, I think, He's physical enough. He's fast enough. He's got a really good catch radius. He can he tracks the ball really well. I mean, directly over his head, one-handed plays behind the helmet of defenders. I was on a show last night with the Chicago Bears guys at TTNL Network, where we did basically two hours of film study, and we uh, and we looked at some at Mingo, and I showed catches of him like making plays like that that are crazy. He just um. He didn't have as good of a team. He didn't have Matt Corral thrown to him, um, you know, last right. year. Um, Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart, you know, and he can, uh, he's a decent blocker. You can use off the wing. So if things really work out, maybe he's an, in that Anquan Bolden mode of a player. Mm. Maybe not quite as good because Bolden was great. Bolden was awesome. So good. And if, <laughs> And if he just blows the doors off it, like just completely blows the doors off it, then he's somewhere between a mix of Bolden and A.J. Brown. I don't think he's going to get there, but I think he will be a solid number two or number three receiver who fantasy receivers could get like top 36 production out of, maybe on occasion top 24. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I got I know you have two more guys up here, one that we do like a good bit and one that I've, I've kind of has been sliding um, for a lot of people. 
for me, I, I don't really know what to do with him. It seems like he could be great, but I'm, I'm a little scared of him as just character wise. Um, Cedric Tillman and Boutte. So let's let's maybe wrap up with those two guys and then hit us with some sleepers. What are your thoughts on on Tillman? You know, again, I think he he's being helped out possibly by, again, not be, being a bit of a shorter class where these bigger guys are get, getting late, late risers. And I know Tillman was was outstanding two years ago and then was banged up and then came back this year and, and, and was OK at, at times. Uh, but give me your give me your thoughts on on what Cedric Tillman is and, and can be. Yeah, certainly. You know, and, and when you look at Tillman, one of the things I liked about him is that he's rugged at the catch point he has good hands even when he's not utilizing the 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 perfect technique and because like i said everyone clap attacks but the fact that he can win with perfect technique and without it and his drops are isolated occurrences that's a real good thing he's not a sudden deep threat but he has enough speed to win in all three ranges of the field um he's like like mike williams does you know, Mike Williams isn't right. going to blow the doors off you vertically, but he's going to he's going to get open in the deep ranges of the field often enough. Go Tigers. He, yep, there you go. <laughs> Intermediate route running requires sharp flat breaks against man to cut man to man coverage. It can get a little bit better, but he has the physical skills to do it. You see the the bend, so he's going to get better there. He's good against zone. He's a skilled contested catch guy. Mm-hmm. Um the short area quickness and acceleration are real strengths to his game. So he's going to have things to build on because of his releases. I think he's going to be a productive perimeter receiver. He's going to be a starter. And he's going to give you 900 to 1200 yards during his peak years. Um, so I'm a big fan of what Tillman has to offer. And I'm a big fan of Boutte. Because, yeah, so I saw that. I'm, yeah. Which give me, give me, give it to me. What do you, no, yeah. no concern on the human. Well, I don't know enough about the human, but I'll put it this Fair way. Enough. Fair I'll, enough. I'll put it this way. There are plenty of 18-year-old kids who are built up to be the next great thing, and then when they have a 300-yard game to start off their career, coming off the heels of having Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson mm-hmm. as guys that you were just following, and your team's at the top of the, the heap, and suddenly it plummets like a stone and, you know, like (laughs) an anvil dropped into a lake, you know, and every, all the turmoil of that team. And then everyone's blaming you. Everyone's scrutinizing you, you know, because, because of that. Um, But you're not the problem and you're not that type of receiver. You weren't Justin Jefferson. You weren't Jamar Chase. You never were on your best day. What you are is a really good slot receiver who can play a little flanker, um, that not like Justin Jefferson, but more like Robert Woods. Robert Woods, who at the Combine was not as quick as Boutte, had a vertical leap, the same vertic- bad vertical leap that Boutte had. Mm-hmm. Jarvis Landry, another LSU guy, not as fast as Boutte, not as quick as Boutte, not nearly so, not as big, you know, not as um, also similar vertical, same vertical actually. Those two guys are where he is. He plays his game on the ground. Just like people knocked Dalvin Cook because his vertical was bad, and they didn't realize that, like we said, curvy linear movement bending, that's what his game was. It wasn't <laughs> hard cuts. you know. So Butte plays on the ground. He makes the first man miss, often makes the second man miss. He's tough. He makes tough catches. He generally catches the ball well. You know what? If you're at LSU, you guys live down here, you know – Football is a religion, and you sure. know that when your team's sucking hard after it was doing great, and you were expecting to do what, say, University of Georgia's done for the past couple of years, you know, you're mad, and all your people are mad, and they're calling in on radio, and sure. the writers are saying, he took a playoff. Uh, he, he, yeah, <laughs> he took a playoff. He took yeah. two plays off. Everybody takes plays off. Yeah. He's not A.T. Perry where you've got to, like, duct take the light switch to on – to, to make sure that he's running great routes that he's capable of. You know, he he actually is a good player who is pretty consistent, took some plays off. There was a rumor that he, like, got involved in a, yeah. like, a sex party or something in Atlanta. Who and did like, it, you know? And got <laughs> – who and <laughs> let's be real. If you're an 18-year-old kid getting this kind of attention, 
who didn't want to okay mm-hmm. i'm not saying that it's the right thing to do or it's the best thing to do or the most mature thing i don't even know if it's true right i just know that you know if you're going to take a kid and you're going to bang on him because he got injured and because he wasn't living up to expectations that were not accurate to begin with and you're not seeing him for the player he is maybe there's some there's some fire to that smoke and we'll find out but there's lots of kids I'll put it I'll end it this way and I'll say you know I've been told this by veterans in the league who are part of evaluation processes at a high level not just the scout level they've been the scout but they've also been at a higher level and what they tell me is that there are some teams that get it right, but there are a lot of teams that when they evaluate character, here's what happens. Let's say, you know, one of us is a, you know, person A is a scout and they go to the LSU and they say, listen, tell the re- talk to the recruiting coordinator. What's Boutte like? Oh, well, you know, he likes to go out and party a lot. You know, he, um, you know, he's, he, he, he parties a lot. Well, Okay, and then they go back to their team, and the team lets them editorialize this. Now, again, scouts are generally 25 to 35 years old. They make thirty to $35,000 a year. Um, they've never had any other gig with experience doing this type of stuff. Sure. So they're still learning how to interview people and make something out of that. So they go back to the team and say, yeah, he's a partier. We don't want him to take him off your board. Okay, that's one team. Then another team goes – you know, Scout B goes and asks the, the coordinator, and the coordinator says, um, no, nah, man, um, yeah, he's a partier. Well, let's go. What bar does he go to? Do you know where he goes? Ask one of his teammates. Goes to his teammate, hey, do you guys frequent any bars? Where does you and Kayshawn go? Goes, we go to this club here. So you go Baton Rouge, you go to the local club down, water and hole down there, and you, you ask a waitress or a, a bartender. Do you know this guy? Do you see him here regularly? Yeah, we see him three times a week. And then you go off and tell everybody he goes to a club three times a week. And now take him off the board because he's like two. And then the third guy goes and says, ask those same questions. But then when he's at the club, he goes, so um, does he drink while he's there? No, he brings his own water bottle. And he comes three times a week. How long does he stay? He's, he gets here about 7.30, 8.30, leaves no later than 9.30 every night. He's just with his friends. Has he ever gotten in trouble? No. Has he ever, like, hit on girls and look like there's a trouble? No. Nope. Does he look like he started any fights with anybody? No. Nope. He's a nice guy. He's a good tipper. He actually um, he just drinks his water. He socializes with people he knows. People come up to him. He smiles. He's a good guy. And he leaves. We don't even remember when he left half the time. But he's gone by like we know he's out by like this certain time, and we know who he is. Hey, well, you the know? sex party starts at nine thirty. I mean, what... there you go. That's right. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, now you're that scout. See, you yeah. know, so you're the better. You're a scout D who like went one step ahead of everybody. But that's the point. right, right. I, so I feel you. We just don't know. We just don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, look, give me, give me a quick. We've we've taken up a ton of time, but give me. We got sleepers for every other position. Give me, give me two or three for the uh, wide receivers here. Well, you know, I think everybody kind of likes Jaden Reed. I really like Jaden Reed. I think that he's he a State to a good guy. Michigan State. I think he can play all three positions eventually. Maybe not the level stuff on Diggs did, but enough to be a starter in the league. Um, you know. I like Grant Dubose out of Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. I'm a I'm kind of a fan of this kid. He's he's kind of a Xavier Richardson, Xavier Hutchinson type of player. He's rugged. He can run after the catch. He makes really good, strong catches at the catch point. Again, good hands, decent routes. There's some things to work with, just not unbelievably fast. I saw I, uh, I saw Steve Smith giving him some love, and then we have a, did we have a guy. See, Here's there guy, you go. Guys come a guy who comes on the podcast who's a friend of one of the guys who's on our podcast, uh Riley Bymaster. Um, and he has um Grant DeBose. He put us on a Grant DeBose. He I think he has him as like one of his guys that he was charting for his conference or whatever. Um yeah. so you know, we've checked out a little Grant DeBose. So we we like that. Yeah, he's kind of a to me, he's kind of you think Reggie Wayne, Daryl Jackson. Like Daryl Jackson is where he's aspiring to, and if he blows out of the box, maybe he can become somewhere the big go. He's not quite Reggie Wayne, but maybe he's a lower middle class Reggie Wayne. Sure. You know? So that's that's still really good. He can, I think he can be a contributor if not a starter. So there's two guys. I like the ECU kid, C.J. Johnson. Um, I I think that if Noah Smith 
Noah, um, what's Brown? his name? Noah Brown. Yeah, thank you. If Noah Brown is getting a shot maybe in Texas, I don't know if he will in Houston. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think he can be a slightly better version of Noah Brown. He's physical. He knows how to be physical. He He's quick enough with his movements. He has good skills off the line. I think he has – He's a playmaker at the catch point. Um, you know, he's never going to be Larry Fitzgerald, but, you know, that's kind of the role that you could see him possibly fitting into. And he's big enough that you might go, well, you know, we like this kid. Maybe yeah. we don't need to use that second tight end. We can use him in the slot and get even, you know, get quality work out of him as our our slot flanker hybrid. Yeah, it took Noah Brown a minute, but also another another Riley uh, another Riley guy. He was a, he liked Noah Brown a good bit, so yeah. um, he's barking up the right tree. All right, Matt, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for spending all that time with us. Um, again, if you're not following him, you can find him at Matt Waldman. You have to download the the RSP from my man at this point, and that's at mattwaldmanrsp.com. Is that correct? Or you can go directly to mattwaldman.com and just buy it if you want to do that. But if you want to look oh, at what I've got available, mattwaldmanrsp.com is good too. So any of those above, again. year, baby. This, this is RSP's moving out of the house, getting his own apartment. <laughs> yeah, an adult. Find a <laughs> job, dude. Find it's a permanent a, it's job. It's an adult, I guess. I don't know if it, uh, these yeah. days, you, you know. He's yeah, got, 18's a new 15, you know. Yeah. He's self-sufficient. I will say yeah. that. He has gotten a job already. So <laughs> yeah. he's ahead of the curve there. We he's just pay, want to make sure he doesn't blow rent. his money. Yeah. 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 So and all through the year, you can check out Matt on his YouTube channel. Um, he's always putting out great, great content to get your game up, learn a little bit of something. I know I know a lot of people don't really like to learn these days. They just want a list of 10 guys to tell you who the best ones are. But if you want to learn, Matt can, Matt can uh, show you the ropes. And, and and you guys, you know, you guys have the type of audience for those kind of people that want to know the ropes or want to right. are diehards. And that's why I like doing these shows because that's my audience. You know, the pe- I can give you the answers too. But, yeah. And I do that. But, you know, the, most people who come and stay are the ones that want the ropes. For sure. For my, sure. one right. of my well, favorite again. parts of the rsp is when he's like it says rankings suck but what we people love them you know we need them like it's yeah it's, tear it up That's and don't get picky that, I, that was the zoltan's quote I, tear it up don't get picky you know these rankings people got to have them in a list but you know it's it's fluid and there's some play yeah all right right Straightful. all right well speaking of play go go get your go get a little little bass time in or, or some saxophone mm. um and, and and get out of here with us again uh five star reviews the youtube channel all that good stuff patreon yada 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 we don't want to hold that up anymore so we'll catch you next time peace